Welcome to Casebag Watches, my name is Tim and in this episode we talk about the secret of the longitudes and so uh, about navigation and slightly crazy, why are we talking about navigation here? And I was inspired by my Dubi and Schaldenbrandte Diplomatic, still really in love with that watch. And it's a chronometer with a second time zone. And I asked myself, second time zone, okay, yeah, I know what the time zone is of course, chronometer, yeah, but there was a link to a navigation. Back then, chronometers were important, were, were incredibly important for navigation purposes. Tim, do you know all this? Do you know the difference between latitude and longitude and how this is connected to time zones? And the answer was no. <laughs> I have not the slightest idea. And and I, I, I felt that this is a, we call this Bildungslücke in Germany. Bildungslücke. Bildungslücke means there's a brick missing in your wall of knowledge, so to speak, in your education. And yeah, and my building's look has the size of a pink elephant, I guess, in which time zones and everything. And so, but I've done my homework now. I've done some research and I found many explanations here on YouTube as well. Way too complicated in my eyes. And so maybe we can, just, we can do this easier. And so my offer to you is stay with me until the end. I will cut this video under 10 minutes. And after that, you will be able to explain your kids what's longitude, what's latitude, how this is connected with our time zones, what, why is the chronometer, let's say, one of the most important inventions in human history. And explaining all this to your kid, I think, is way more important than passing your Patek Philippe to your, to your son, like this stupid ad <laughs> ad wants us to do. Okay, let's start. Let's start. We have our globe. Imagine our globe and there you have a nice grid on it so that we can make it easier to find our position. And you have two sort of lines. You have the latitude, like a belt, and the latitude zero is the equator. Okay, very easy. And the beauty here is um, finding your latitude is incredibly easy. Let's imagine you are, you are on your ship and you want to know your latitude. Then you use your sextant and you measure the distance between a certain star, let's say Polaris, and the horizon. And now you have an angle. Your sextant shows you an angle and the angle is legible on a scale and that's your latitude. So very, very easy. Again, the distance between a star and the horizon creates an angle and this angle is your latitude. Job done. The problem here is, if you know your position on the latitude, the latitude goes like a belt around the globe, as I said. And without the longitude now, you could be in the Atlantic or in the Pacific. The latitude doesn't say any word about your exact position. It only says where, in, in which height, so to speak, in which height on the globe you are located. And so this is not enough. We need the, the longitude now. And this is way more complicated. All seagoing nations during history um, searched for a solution um, over centuries and millenniums. And so let's begin. Imagine yourself in Greenwich, England. All right, Greenwich. And Greenwich is GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. The name says it, all right? And this means if you are in Greenwich and it's 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock at noon, then you see the sun on the longitude zero okay every time in greenwich every day at 12 o'clock the sun marks longitude zero second information we know that our globe rotates and he makes one full turn in one day we learned this in school very very easy or you can say it turns 360 degrees in 24 hours every day so we can do a little bit of math and then we can easily find out that in one single hour the globe rotates 15 degrees Okay, and 24 multiplied by 15 are 360. So every hour, 15 degrees. So imagine yourself in Greenwich again, you're standing there, and again, it's 12 o'clock, and the sun is exactly on the longitude zero. But one hour later, the Earth has rotated 15 degrees, and so there's no more that nice connection between the sun and the longitude, okay? The lucky people who live under the longitude 15, if they now look in the sky at 12 o'clock, then they find the sun exactly on their longitude. 
okay? And two hours after Greenwich Mean Time, the lucky people who live on a small island under longitude 30, now they can see in the sky and at 12 o'clock they, they see the nice connection, sun sits exactly on their longitude. And if you live on such an island, then the things are very, very easy. You know, of course, your local time and then you can call your aunt in Greenwich and ask her what time it is there. And then you can figure out the distance. You can figure out the difference in hours. So let's let's assume you are on your island and it's 10 o'clock in the morning and you call your aunt in Greenwich and they say to you it's 12 o'clock here. So then you have a time difference. You have two time zones, two hours. And you know exactly the earth rotates 15 degrees in one hour and so it has to rotate 30 degrees in two hours and that's your longitude. You are on longitude 30 and you will be there tomorrow and the next week because your island will not move hopefully and complete different situation you find if you are on a vessel on a, on a, on a ship on the ocean makes no sense set your your watch let's say two chronometers one at green greenwich time and one at your local time you are on a moving object and so there's no sense to set a local time for you in theory you must define your local time every minute new because your ship is passing through time zones with every sea mile and so you need a better solution you need a method to find out your local time and back then they did this with the sun we all know if the sun reaches his highest peak then it's 12 o'clock Again, I'm simplifying here a little bit. In reality, you have to make some corrections, but the basic idea is exactly this. At noon, the sun has reached its highest peak. And so, you are on your vessel, you are on your ship, and you, you wait until the sun has reached its highest peak, and then you know exactly, now we have here local time, 12 o'clock. And then you go to your chronometer, and your chronometer tells you the Greenwich mean time. And let's assume in Greenwich it's let's say four o'clock in the afternoon, okay? And so we have a time difference of four hours. And now again, you know, in one hour, the earth will rotate 15 degrees, has to rotate 15 degrees, and in four hours, it will rotate four times 15 degrees, which is 60 degrees. So your longitude is 60, that's the method. And one tip here, if you really want to explain this to your kids, if you actually have kids, then a good method is, of course, a globe, but there are special globes out there, and those are illuminated globes with a light in it. And when I was young, basically every kid had such a globe, and it was, it was marvelous to see that. You could darken your room, switch on the light, and then you had the feeling like, like, a, like a space traveler. You could see that, that illuminated globe in your dark room. It was a fascinating view. And it was very easy to explain things with, with those globes and let's say uh, a little lamp which represents the sun. So big recommendation. And they're still available, those globes, absolutely cheap on Amazon. And so you find an Amazon affiliate link in the description. And now we can understand why it's so crucial that a watch is a chronometer, a watch for navigation purposes is a chronometer, has to be precise. Imagine a watch which loses every day one minute. And back then in the time of let's say James Cook, 18th century, this was acceptable. A watch which loses one minute a day was totally acceptable. But now imagine that your journey um, lasts one year. Or let's simplify 360 days. And every day now you lose one minute. Then after 360 uh, days, you have lost 360 minutes. Those are six hours, six entire hours. And let's, let's assume you have a super precise watch, loses only 20 seconds. 20 seconds over a year means that you, you are way out of course. 20 seconds would mean a difference of two hours. Two hours. And two hours in Earth rotation are quite a couple of sea miles. I can assure you that. And the, the consequence is that you, during the night, hit a shore. And you wasn't aware that the, that the shore was there. You, you have expected that the shore was 200 or 300 or 400 sea miles away still. And so this is what I mean. The, the, the chronometer then was a matter of life and death. And if you want more topics like this, more topics about, let's say, navigation, our globe, longitudes and latitudes, and let's say the bigger themes around time, around measuring time, then please let me know in the comments.
Okay, that's all. And you have to admit, this wasn't so hard, right? I mean, maybe you have to watch the video twice. But if you have to watch it three times, then I think I've failed. Then let me know in the comments, please. Then shame on me. But um, I'm, I'm confident that we are able to understand this. And if it's understood, then I think it can change your view on the topic watches, GMT, chronometers, time zones and everything. And that's so, so I think it's a good way to reach a more comprehensive knowledge about this, this beautiful, this beautiful, uh -huh, this beautiful thing. Diplomatic, two time zones, um, 24 hours indicator, sterling silver, um, this is marvelous. Okay, stop, stop, we're at the end of this video. So thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time. Thank you.